Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Viola Vanderoot, Wealth Advisor at National Bank Financial, and I want to welcome you here today to our short Buys Views session. Thought it was appropriate with all the negative news right now and market volatility, et cetera, to just step back and take a look at things and help put it all in perspective for you. So we'll also be sending this out to clients afterwards. And if you want to share it with anyone, the recording, um, you're perfectly welcome to do that. So um, we're going to go through the presentation and then afterwards I'll come back and answer any questions. You have a question and answer function that you can type in a question and it will be private until uh, we publish it and please do feel free to use that. So with that, we'll go to our slides and get into the presentation. So right now, lots to worry about. Some of you probably right now are feeling like that bottom picture, chewing your nails as you watch the price of your grocery bills and gas bills go up. And then the news telling us about reaching, you know, peaks of inflation. Um, but it, it's something that we haven't seen for a while. These kind of inflation rates are something that we haven't had. We've been having years where government's been able to keep inflation in sort of a tight range of around 2%. But with all the things we've been through with the pandemic, and then the um, invasion of Ukraine, we certainly have had a lot of reasons for supply chain issues that have led to inflation. So right now we've got a situation where the uh, central banks are trying to control inflation using their usual tool of raising interest rates. So we're gonna take a look at what that looks like, and we're gonna take a look at the worries about recessions. So um, before we just get into that, I want to remind you though that all the negative news you're hearing right now on um, what's going on is something that has to be put into perspective and that's what I'm here to help you do because as I often remind you it makes great news that headlines to talk about the dramatic drops in the markets but they don't often talk about the slow steady growth that happens over the long term because it's like watching paint dry it's not very exciting but it really is effective so we'll take a look at that too so Moving on to our next slide here. Some of you may be feeling like this gentleman here, just kind of peeking out from behind um, closed eyes, maybe taking a peek at your portfolio um, and feeling kind of emotional about it. And the reality is, is you're not alone. Um, at National Bank Financial, our um, really skilled team at head office does a market sentiment um, analysis on a continual basis, always looking at how the markets are viewing what's going on. And they have this sentiment indicator here. So it ranges from extreme pessimism to extreme optimism. And right now we can see it's at a number nine. It's pretty high at the pessimism level. We look at the chart over here and we can see that when the pandemic hit in 2020, we were at a period of very extreme pessimism. OK, and this is where we are right now. We can see this line happening here of pessimism. Now, what I want to bring to your attention is how in 2019 and 2020, during these periods of pessimism, they correspond with the market being at a bottom. And then when we look at the green line, that's the times when the market's extreme optimism, everybody's feeling really good. You probably hear your friends bragging about the money they made in their tech stocks or their pot stocks or whatever the flavor of the day is. And we can see 
that those times of extreme optimism also coincide with the market being at a peak right before a correction. And so that's what um, our team tracks, because typically when people are extremely optimistic, that's a warning sign that things could change. Just as when we see extreme pessimism, it's a warning sign that things will probably change. So this is putting it in a simplistic way. <laughs> and you've probably seen me use this chart before, but we see it time and time again. I've been using this chart in seminars for probably 20 years and we go through these cycles time and time again. So right now we're probably in this kind of period of panic right now, getting to despondency. <laughs> and it always turns out that the point of maximum financial opportunity is at this bottom here. And the most risk happens at the top when everybody's so happy about the money they're making in the market and they want to buy those stocks that have doubled and tripled in value. And that's the point of maximum risk. So right now we're worried about inflation and that's causing that extreme pessimism. But this chart here shows us that back in the 70s, when we had a lot of inflation and uh, many of us remember those days and that's this dotted line here, this orange line. And we can see here that we had a peak of inflation and following, and certainly that coincided with a market correction, but following that peak of inflation, the market climbed to new highs. And again here, we have this uh, peak of inflation. This was the worst point in the mid 70s there. The market tanked and then the market was going up during that next leg up. So again here, just as we were ending the 70s, heading into the 80s, the inflation rate peaked and the market then continued upward. So should you be fearing a recession is the bottom line. And as we know, the markets are always forward looking. And so right now they're fearing a recession. But if you're in a balanced portfolio, and that's what this is a very simplistic um, look at here is a balanced portfolio of 60% equities, 40% bonds. If we take a look here um, at the most recent period of time in everyone's memory, the pandemic hitting February 2020 to March 2020, 12 months before the pandemic hit, a 60-40 portfolio um, was up about you know, double digit returns. During that time down, certainly, but at that time, remember, the stock market itself was down about 34%. Now, 12 months after, so by March of 2021, again, recovery from this down point and from the whole period from start to finish, so basically a two year time period, um, double digit returns. So we see that certainly there's periods of time when it has been negative and the period of time when we had the tech crash followed by 9-11, you know, one thing after another. We did have two years of pain and we certainly had two years of pain during the financial crisis and those were very extreme periods of time. But I'm sure that for most of you, that's kind of in the rear view mirror at this time. We were able to put those things in perspective. But right now we're fearing a recession. And so we're in that period of time before a recession actually hits. So where are we right now? Well, with interest rates, and this is right up to date here, we have on the Canadian side, we have short-term interest rates of about 2%. And then we've got um, it having a steep rise up to just over three and 
it stays just over three all the way out to the 30 year mark. So from approximately the two or three year mark out to 30, it's pretty level, but we've got a steep edge to it here. And then a year ago, <laughs> the short term rates were under 1% and then the 30 year rates were under two, but a very nice kind of expected yield curve. Similar picture on the US side. Now what we typically are always watching for when we're worried about recessions is what's called an inverted yield curve. So an inverted yield curve has these shorter rates higher than the longer rates. And you can see that, you know, you could say that there is a bit of inversion here, but it's really not a steep enough inversion to be a clear signal. And so that's where there's talk and controversy right now. If we do end up though with these overnight short term rates climbing and the longer rates not climbing as well, we could end up with a more um, obvious inverted yield curve. So right now, um, basically, these are the kind of rates we're looking at, and it's certainly much higher than we had uh, a year ago. But what everybody's really focused on right now is those short term overnight rates. And in Canada, it's called the overnight rate. In the US, it's called the Fed funds rate. So these are the increases we've had recently. So when the pandemic hit, they very quickly dropped the rates to stimulate the economy. It stayed extremely low at a quarter of a point. And this is the rate that um, the banks borrow at overnight um, for their short term borrowings. And they peg everything off of this. So Prime is um, built off of that. And then in turn, things like variable mortgages are built off of the Prime rate. So we can see we've had some steep jumps up. That's, you know, the big news last week was the US jumping to 1.75. Um, but if we look at this next chart here, this shows us going back to 2016. Now, the previous dropping of the overnight rate was with the financial crisis, and they left it at a half a percent for many years and finally started to raise it in 2017, 2018, 2019. So prior to the pandemic hitting, the rate was up to two and a half in the US and about one and three quarters in Canada, and then they dropped it right down. So we're sitting here at the moment, and this is the projections. This is what people are projecting it's gonna go to. Um, That's that's what the market's projecting. Now, our team is not expecting it to go over 3% um, because that will put us in a very restrictive um, place with the economy, but they are certainly expecting it to go up to this area. Who's got the right crystal ball? It's hard to say because back in December, this is what the projections were and we've already surpassed that. So it's, really hard to say exactly what's going to happen. Nobody knows for sure, but we're not expecting them to go this high and be pushed into a recession. Where are we on the stock market? This is the Canadian market as of today. I took this screenshot a little earlier this morning and we can see that we've had this drop since the beginning of the year. So this is what everybody's focused on in the news. But gosh, you know, look here. We're just about where we were a year ago. This is the pandemic hitting here and this is pre pandemic. So this is December 2019. We're still significantly above that point. And that's the, the piece of news that the market um, isn't as focused on because the media is not as focused on that. They just tell you about this part of it. They don't tell you about this. But this chart, as you can see, goes back 20 years. So we can see the financial crisis hitting here and recovering out of that. And we can see some other dips 
for other various reasons. We can see the pandemic hitting, and certainly when those interest rates were rising that we just looked at, we had this drop in the markets here. Um, but those are all in the rear view mirror now, and this is what the media and the news is focused on. Same thing if we look at the US market, very similar, you know, financial crisis here, the scares with interest rates um, in 2018, and then the pandemic hitting in 2020. And this is the decline the market's focused on right now. But as you can see, you know, going back 100 years, there's significant periods of time when the markets have had a lot of volatility. Certainly the depression was the worst chunk of time. We had the oil crisis in the 70s and then we had the tech bubble burst and the financial crisis through here. Um, but what I want you to focus on is this dotted line because this is the trend line that just continues up. And that's what we need to focus on for the long term, because that's what's important to your long term goals. Not all these worries, because there's always something to worry about. It's this long term trend line. And certainly bear markets are painful, but when we look at how long it takes to recover, it can vary a lot. But when we look at the periods of time after recovery, six months, 12 months, 24 months, three years. So three years after recovery, the S&P 500 is typically up close to 60%. So that's something to focus on. So what you have to ask yourself is why am I invested in the first place? And if you're invested for funding your retirement, so basically you're funding yourself for your pension in retirement or for financial freedom, then we're focused on a portfolio mix. But if you're needing money in the next year and a half, certainly that money should be in savings or cash or a fixed GIC. But if you're invested for the longer term, then you're going to benefit from that long term trend line we just looked at. So what I'd like you to focus on is how. Every few years we have a storm and, you know, here we've got a real nasty storm in this picture, but it's that phrase that we hear asset allocation that gives us the shelter from the storm. So the storm is still raging out there, but when we have cash on hand for those short term needs and we're diversified. And. When I say diversification, it's many levels of diversification, certainly those people who are just in cryptocurrency right now. They're being decimated and they may never recover. You know, I'm not a cryptocurrency expert, but I do know that when you put all your eggs in one basket, you don't have this protection from the storm. You are out there in this full fury. So when you hear about those financial storms, think about this. Think about how you can remain inside protected here. We've got a guardrail. We've got the glass that you can view the storm through, but you've got protection and so you can wait that storm out. And here we have the 10 commandments. And these 10 commandments I actually pulled from a document from 10 years ago, but these are truths whether it's now or 10 years from now or 20 years ago. The bottom line is volatility is a fact of life when it comes to the financial markets and volatility creates opportunity. So if you're someone who's built up savings over the course of the pandemic because you couldn't travel or you couldn't do a lot of things, 
then this is actually a real window of opportunity for you. At the very least, you've got some great rates on GICs, but you can also go into the market when things are on sale. So that's the kind of opportunity that people like Warren Buffett wait for. And this is the most important one, that if stock markets weren't volatile, they would return the same short-term and long-term rates as GICs. So we have to go through this pain to get those rates of return that keep us ahead of inflation. So the only way that you have a true permanent loss is when you actually sell. So if you just stay in the protection of your um, asset allocation or your uh, storm watching room, then you aren't actually generating a loss because you haven't actually sold. So market downturns create buying opportunities. Long term investment risk is ma managed with asset mix. Your risk tolerance, investment objectives, your time horizon. This leads to a profile that corresponds to a target asset mix. So this is where we ask you questions. You know, what is your comfort level? What are you trying to achieve? What is your money really invested for? Because it's about meeting your own personal goals. And if you've got a long term strategy and a long term plan, don't abandon it because of a short term. News event. Certainly periodic tactical shifts. Are appropriate you know, taking a bit of profits, shifting things when there's opportunities, but making big, big changes is a recipe for poor returns. And adequate diversification is the key. So if you have a single industry, a single stock, um, a single focus, you may never recover. And I certainly have people come to me and tell me, oh, but I lost 50% during the financial crisis. Well, that tells me very clearly that the, the person was not diversified and w wasn't able to wait out the storm because they were in things that weren't going to recover. So these 10 commandments are true today and they'll be true tomorrow as well. So just a reminder that what we're talking about today is your portfolio management, but it just is a piece of the puzzle that all these things tie together because for you and your life, there's all kinds of financial goals and this is what we're here to help you with.